In this video, we are going to take a look at the leaders of a Death Watch army and how to best include them in 9th edition. First, we will look at each of the HQ choices available, what works best for them and what pitfalls to avoid. In the second part of the video, we will dive into some of the relics and warlord traits that have been mentioned while discussing the HQ choices and how to best include them in a Death Watch chart. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. Here you will find tools and guides as versatile as a Swiss army knife to help you build your army. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. In case you end up liking this content, please feel free to subscribe. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first HQ we'll be looking at is the Watchmaster, which is the Chapter Master equivalent in a Death Watch army. While the Death Watch supplement has him wrongly listed at 125 points, this value has since been corrected in the December Death Watch FAQ, bringing him up to 130 points. The Watchmaster is the only way to get the Chapter Master kind of rerolls. This is a bit unfortunate because the Watchmaster comes with a fixed loadout which cannot be changed. His stats are quite alright, he rocks a default 2 plus 4 plus plus and his Guardian Spear gets access to special issue ammunition. However, his inability to change loadouts prevents him from accessing certain popular war gear choices. For Death Watch, one of the more notable ones is the Dominus Aegis, granting a 5 plus symbol save to nearby units, which would require him to be able to take a Storm Shield. Furthermore, he cannot take a jump pack or a bike, making him slow on his own. He does gain access to two exclusive stratagems though. One is Clavis, which he can aim at vehicles. The other one is Adaptive Tactics, a one-time usage which lets you change the battlefield role selected for the purposes of the Xenus Hunter's chapter tactic. All in all, personally, I only rate him as situational and far from being an auto-include due to his fixed loadout and being unable to carry one of the potential key relics of a Death Watch army. If Chapter Master style rerolls for a slow unit like an Indometer kill team are what you are looking for, then taking one is perfectly fine. In other situations, you might have to take a captain instead. Speaking of which, let's have a look at the captains of the Death Watch. As previously mentioned, the chapter master of the Death Watch is the Watchmaster, so a captain cannot be upgraded to chapter master. That restriction aside, Death Watch captains are as flexible as the ones from other chapters, they come in different variants with a huge war gear selection. Notable exclusive Death Watch war gear would be the Xenophase Blade, which ignores invul saves. Taking a Storm Shield on a captain grants access to the powerful Dominus Aegis relic, which is a major advantage over the Watchmaster. With Watch Captain Artemis, there is also a named version. While he is not bad as such, his fixed loadout is unlikely to be optimal and due to the restrictions already placed on Watchmasters, I don't think it's sensible to bring him over a captain with more flexible war gear. All in all, I consider a captain to be an excellent pick and pretty much an auto-include when not going for a Watchmaster. Just like in other Space Marine armies, it is possible to take both a Watchmaster and the captain, but you cannot take more than one captain or one watchmaster. 
lieutenants are in a bit of a naught spot in a Death Watch army because there are already plenty of ways for the Death Watch to get wound rerolls. This makes the aura of the lieutenants less desirable overall. With plenty of good HQ choices available, they have a very hard time to compete for the slot. One possible variant would be the Indomitus Lieutenant with the Storm Shield, granting him access to the mentioned Dominus Egypt's relic. This could be a way to circumvent the problem of the Watchmaster's inflexible loadout. However, the relic can also be put on a company champion instead, which is cheaper and does not take up an HQ slot. When going for a lieutenant in a Space Marine army, it is possible to take a second one without taking up another HQ slot. One possible variant could be to take the Indomitus lieutenant for the relic, then take a Reaver variant for the Terror Troop stratagem which can disable OPSEC on enemy units. Because of the Reaver variant being a Phobos armor model, he could also grant his aura to a Spectre skill team with a Comeray on one of the infiltrators. The combined costs of that combo would be 165 points, which isn't exactly cheap, but it might be worth considering depending on the list. All in all, I rate the lieutenants as mediocre at best, and they rarely find their way into my lists. Moving on to the chaplains, and they are pretty much the same as for other chapters. They can be upgraded to a Master of Sanctity, and they have access to a variety of different deployment options. One thing to consider though, is that they recite their litanies during the command phase, so if you deploy a jump pack or terminator chaplain, this might interfere with their ability to boost nearby units. Popular litanies are Mantra of Strength, basically turning themselves into a beat stick, or the Canticle of Hate, which helps with charges. The most notable variant would be the Primaris Chaplain on bike, which is ideal for the Beacon and Chalice Relic and generally supporting other fast units such as Outriders or Veteran Bikers, best to be used in a kill team, so they can have access to OPSEC. The Primaris Chaplain on bike is also quite durable himself and can put up a fight especially when given popular relics from the Space Marine Codex. Lastly, there is a named variant with Chaplain Cassius, but pretty much as with the Captains, the war gear is too limited to consider him over the Biker variant, for instance. Overall, the Chaplain also gets the excellent rating as far as I'm concerned. Then finally, the Librarians are celebrating a comeback with the new Death Watch supplement. Pretty much in line with the librarians from other Space Marine chapters, librarians can take a variety of gear and are upgradable to a chief librarian. The librarians of the Death Watch get access to the Xenopurge discipline, which is strong, though not as strong as the one from the Dark Angels, for example. Anyway, Premorthic Resonance which is aimed at close combat, and Fortified with Contempt, which is a 5 plus feel no pain, are two excellent picks. A notable variant is the Librarian in Phobos Armor, which gains access to concealed positions and can be deployed alongside some infiltrators. This also makes him a great choice for the Beacon and Chalice Relic. The named version, Codicier Natorian, could be an option in case extra mobility and additional deployment options are not required. Out of the named characters, the Death Watch get, this one is easily the best. All in all, I rate librarians as excellent and pretty much an auto-include due to what the Xenoperch discipline has to offer. Perhaps not the most obvious choice, but also tech marines have much to offer for the Death Watch. The Primaris version brings quite decent firepower on its own and I recommend including one the moment you bring two or more dreadnoughts or invest heavily into a big vehicle. In either case, I would upgrade him to the Master of the Forge. There is also some great synergy 
with the artificial bolt cache relic, which enables him to get access to special issue ammunition and making him even more shooty than he already is. While I quite like the Primaris Tech Marine, I would only bring him along in combination with multiple dreadnoughts and or a heavy vehicle. As such, I rate him as situational. With the different HQs covered, let's take a quick look at the relics that were previously mentioned. The Beacon and Chalice is usable once per battle and can only be activated if the bearer did not arrive as reinforcements this turn. This is why the Biker Chaplain and the Phobos Librarian are particularly good for this one. Upon activation, you can select one infantry or biker unit that is either on the battlefield and did not arrive as reinforcements, is in the teleportarium or in strategic reserve. That unit can then be set up as reinforcements within 6 inches of the bearer and more than 9 inches away from enemy models. The Dominus Sieges, as previously mentioned, is a 5 plus invul safe bubble and basically replaces a storm shield. This is particularly good on a captain because they already get the 4 plus invul safe from the iron halo. Therefore, trading the one on the storm shield for a 5 plus bubble doesn't lower their survivability. As a cheaper alternative, it can be used on a lieutenant or a company champion. The artificial bolt cache grants access to special issue ammunition. Aside from putting it on the primary stack marine, an interesting alternative is to use the sanction of the black vault stratagem with which you can equip it on a sergeant. Bolter interceptors or even centurion devastators might be interesting with this one. While you can only equip a single relic by default, there is of course the option to take the relics of the chapter stratagem, which unlocks access to another relic. This can be worth it, for instance, to take both the Dominus Sieges as well as the Beacon and Chalice. With the most important relics covered, let's take a look at some of the Warlord traits I would recommend for the Death Watch. Vigilance Incarnate lets you select a core unit within 6 inches of the Warlord, then letting them reroll wound rolls of 1 against the battlefield roll you select. Paragon of their chapter is a very interesting one, as it lets you select a Warlord trait from another chapter. You can, for instance, take the chance to regenerate CP1 from the Ultramarines with this one. With the ties that bind, you can grant a core unit within 6 inches objective secured. If a model in that unit already has this ability, it counts as an additional model. Combined with kill teams counting as troops, you can pretty much outstack anyone. But this is of course also excellent for units that do not have objective secured, such as the popular Bladeguard veterans. Castellan of the Black Vault is another decent one that lets you pick an additional relic out of a small selection. It can be great to give a mastercrafted weapon in addition to another relic for instance. While warlord traits are limited to one for your warlord by default, there are additional stratagems available to unlock more. The Death Watch specific one is a Witch Chill Unmatched, and there is also the one from the Space Marine Codex called Hero of the Chapter, for 1 CP each, which can be used twice. This brings the total amount of Warlord traits up to 4. To wrap things up, the Watch Master is the Death Watch version of a Chapter Master, which unfortunately only comes with a fixed loadout, missing out on some good war gear and the relic options. He is however the only way to get the chapter master style rerolls. Captains, chaplains and librarians are all in line with what other space marine armies have to offer and make great picks for a death watch army. Especially librarians have received a major boost with the new supplement thanks to the Xenoperch discipline. The Primaris Tech Marine is a solid option when running multiple dreadnoughts or heavy vehicles, and this already impressive firepower can be further boosted through the artificial bolt cache relic. Last and certainly least, 
the lieutenants perform mediocre at best in a default army due to several other means to get wound rerolls. The Domino Sieges and the Beacon and Chalice are strong relic options in pretty much any death watch list and it's worth considering to spend an extra CP in order to be able to get both. While there are multiple good warlord traits, of special note is the Paragon of their chapter 1, which basically lets you pick a warlord trait of another space marine chapter, so just a chance to regain CP1 from the ultramarines. All in all, with the new supplement, the Death Watch has plenty of good HQ options. So that's it for the HQ choices in a Death Watch army. Which ones are your favorites and what kind of stunts have you managed to pull off with them? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you have been enjoying this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.